Hey guys, Aaron here. If you haven't already realised by now, whilst most games do work fine with a hacked Super NES Classic, there are several that either refuse to boot or do have glitches in some way or another. Along with Cluster M's latest version of Hatchy, you can now install RetroArch to your Super NES Classic, which will use its own Super Nintendo emulator for running those problematic games, along with a pretty nice bonus, the ability of playing other game systems such as the NES, Game Boy, Sega Mega Drive, Slash Genesis and a few other systems. I think I'll let you decide whether you want to add those extra games to your system, but definitely for the Super NES ones that do have problems it's well worth doing. In any case, here's a quick guide to show you how to do that. Firstly, you do need to download the latest version of Hakshi, the link is down below under the video itself. Now if you have a previous version of Hakshi, you can put that aside and just extract this one like I do here. You will need the RetroArch with Cause file as well, you can find that link under the video too. Don't need to extract that file, but you definitely need to extract the Hatchy 2 one. Once it's extracted, you can just open up the Hatchy 2 folder and again, and then just open up the Hatchy file. Now we do have a few options here, I don't want to talk too much about it because I've already covered it in a previous video, but Hatchy 2 does actually support the NES Classic, so we're going to concentrate on the Super NES Classic Mini, or the Super Famicom Mini as well, which is Japanese one. I'm going to go for the Super NES Classic. So now I am just going to concentrate about installing RetroArch onto your system now, as well as a few games of course. So what you need to do is find that RetroArch file that you downloaded a short time ago and actually drag it over from Windows into Hatchy 2 itself. Now you will get this screen appear which tells you to dump the kernel image. Now if you haven't actually hacked your Super NES Classic yet, you probably will get this screen, so just follow the instructions, make sure the power button is off, reconnect your Super NES Mini to your PC using the USB cable, hold down the reset button and press on the power button, finally release the reset button after a few seconds and then the power LED should come back on. Of course if you haven't installed the driver yet, just click the install driver button as well. Now this bit does take a little bit of time, but I've sped the process up a bit here to make it a bit more bearable. Now if you do get this error screen here, it's completely fine to click yes, I had no problems doing this. I think it's down to the fact I haven't properly reset my Super NES back to default settings. Now this screen should appear and this is actually RetroArch's emulators, so as you can see there is actually emulators for the Sega Genesis, there's emulators for the Game Boy, uh, RetroArch itself and the replacement Super Nintendo emulator. I personally would just click OK here. Again, I have just sped this process up, in the future you really shouldn't need to reinstall these mods again. So now we can actually start adding games to the system. So as you can see here, I do actually have quite a few different system games. I'm going to go for a Super Nintendo game now that I do know has some issues when you just do the normal hack. As you can see, some of the information over on the right now is actually filled out. I think this is down to the fact that this is a new version of Hatchy 2. But we need to make sure that this game actually uses RetroArch's built-in emulator. So we can do that by going down to the command line, moving all the way to the right hand side and then adding in a new command of dash dash RetroArch. Now any other Super Nintendo games that do work, you don't actually need to put this command in as well. Just leave them as be. It's just the ones that you know have glitches or don't boot at all. Okay, so now I'm just going to go and add all of the other system games to Hatchy 2. So I'll choose everything else in this folder here. Now what you might also get is a box appear like this. I just think this is just a way of telling Hatchy 2 about the system information. 
Okay, so they're all on the left-hand side there, even though they are all for different systems. Now, adding uh, images for the box art is really simple now. Just left mouse click and select them all. Right mouse click, download box art for selected games. This actually makes the process a lot easier rather than choosing each game, then clicking Google to find the image, or browse of course. This can take a little bit of time as well, depending on how many games you are actually adding to the system. Finally, we just want to synchronize those games with your Super NES Classic now. Again, depending on how many games you got, it might take a bit of time, but just leave it to it and it will just transfer everything over here. Okay, so I'm going to try a game that I know has a problem. Illusion of Guide doesn't actually boot whatsoever if you use the standard hack. So, as you can see, it's now working using RetroArch. Now, you don't actually get the borders on the left and right hand side of the screen. Uh, but if you're okay with that, this is the only way you're going to get it to run properly. Now you might actually find the controls aren't properly mapped, so what you can actually do is press start and select, then go to input and then go down to the input user one or two blinds and then change the key combinations to something you're a bit more happy with. You can of course still use save states, just press LR start and select to get back to that system menu and then save as normal. Now I think I'm going to wrap this video up. It's worth pointing out, it might still be worth going back to my previous Hatchy 2 video because I do go into a bit more detail about some of the other aspects of Hatchy 2, especially things like folders. In any case, if you did enjoy this video and find it useful, maybe give it a like, maybe leave me some comments down below as well, and if you are new to the channel, it would be great if you could subscribe. Thanks for watching.